So, and I wanted to, um, I'm going to go ahead and just hold on to this boy because I want Abby to be able to uh, pray with people and stuff because we, we have been talking about divine healing and I believe this to my bones. I believe it all the way. There won't be Sunday school this morning if that's what you're doing, Sue. Yeah, we, we, we'll just, we'll just, I'm not going to be very long. And we're going to pray one for another that we, we are healed. Um, we've been talking about, preaching about the Great Commission and how Jesus commissioned us, his church, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Um, one thing I want to say is the Spirit of God is here this morning. Worship service was such a blessing. Just such a blessing. And how do you know when you have a good worship service? When God touches it. When God, that's, that's when you know. Because when God, when God God is everywhere, but we don't always connect with God everywhere. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean that God decided to make a special appearance in church today. What, what happened today is that during worship service, people were connecting to God. He's always here. It's just like... Um, we may be at a meeting somewhere and there's someone you know that is there but you don't talk to them that time. Oh yeah, John was there. I, I think I saw him. Yeah, he was there. But you, you didn't have any communication with him. So God is in every service every time but we have to make sure that we reach out to him from our heart and, and commune with God. And how do you know when, you, when you've touched God? You know. You just know. I can't really explain it. You just, it's like there's a freedom in your soul. It's like there's a bondage broken. It's like, like if you were having doubts about, is God real? Should I, you know, what should I do? Decisions I need to make. And then, whether through Bible reading or prayer or fellowship with a brother or sister or in a church service like this, there's just a touch on your hand, on, on your heart and your life. And you just like all your fears and all your cares, uh, they may still be, they may be waiting for you when you get home. But for a moment, you just felt the, like you unloaded. You, you felt that, hey, I'm, uh, traveling with with an empty load right now, you know, like if you if you have a if you've ever hauled something in your vehicle, like a heavy weight, like I don't know, whatever your vehicle holds, and then you know you've loaded it down. Like I can tell when I have an empty truck or a load of wood on my truck. You could just tell it goes easier, gets better gas mileage. <laughs> It controls easier, breaks it. It's just, whew, okay? And you can tell when God touches your heart. Well, we've been, we have been, we have been uh, preaching about the Great Commission and going through the things that Jesus said believers will uh, experience. We want to welcome Liz and her grandchildren here today. We're glad she's here. Um, just met her last week, and then she, she showed up this week, and she's always welcome here. Just uh, come and be part of God's family. That's, that's what we want. And so, Jesus said, those who believe on him, first he said they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them or hurt them. And it said, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We're going to receive communion, but it's going to be in a few minutes here. Okay? 
because I want to show you how communion is tied into divine healing. Okay? Um, but Jesus, Jesus said this. He said, these, these are things that will follow those who believe. Now, you may be a believer and not experience some or all of these things. And it may just be because you didn't know. How many of you have, whatever, even with a new phone, you have a new phone and then someone else tells you, did you know you could do this on your phone? And you're like, no, I didn't know I could do that. Right? That's for me because I'm technically challenged, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, no, I didn't know I could do that or do that or do that. Uh, um, just learning how to, le you, there's something you, you had, but you didn't know all that it would do. That, that's what goes on with a lot of believers in God God has the whole package for us, but sometimes we don't realize it's there or we didn't realize we can access it. Sometimes we think um, rebuking the devil or demons or um, uh, being free from sickness or overcoming sickness or praying for other people that are sick. Uh, we think, well, that's for God's elite group. Now, no. God doesn't have an elite group. God has children, amen? You and I that are believers in Christ, when we put our faith in Christ, we become a believer. We become God's children. So Jesus expected these things to take place in his believers, in his followers, in his children. We can go to God for healing. I want to stay focused on that because I don't want to take too long this morning. We can stay focused uh, on God, but as we're focused on God and we're following God, when sickness comes our way, do you know that you can ask God to heal? Now, like Abby uh, uh, testified, she had been dealing with diabetes for like eight years. Okay, you think she prayed? Uh, more than once in those eight years, I'm sure, and I've prayed for her, and what a blessing from the Lord, okay? There was a woman in the Bible that was bowed together. She was, her, her body it was, was like, ooh, uh, bowed down together for 18 years. For 18 years she had been bound, but she kept going to church, could you imagine walking in the church like this 18 years? Bowed together, probably even bowed further than, <laughs> than that, okay? For 18 years, but this woman kept believing in God. Well, why did God let that go so long? Well, maybe it's because we've been dealing with something for that long, and we need to know that no matter how long we've been dealing with something, a touch from God can heal it, can cure it, can settle the score, settle the record, and we can be free. We can be free from uh, addictions, whether it's uh, chocolate bars or, or, or marijuana or shooting stuff in your arm or whatever people do these days, okay? Uh, I've been out of that scene for... Uh, Long, long time, over 40, 41 years now I've been out of that scene, so I'm thankful, okay? So whatever they do, whatever addiction, God can heal addiction. The alcoholic doesn't have to say, I am an alcoholic, I will always be an alcoholic. No, the alcoholic, like me, the alcoholic could say, I was an alcoholic, I gave my life for Jesus, he delivered me, and I'm set free, all right? I don't shake every time I see a tavern or, or I, I go back to get milk in Walmart out at Colville and I got to walk past all the, all the alcohol there. I don't shake and quiver and, oh, I'm about ready to fall over here. I'm going to bust open this, uh, this, this booze here. And No, no, God delivered me. I can, you could throw it at me if you want. I don't, I don't want it. 
There, there is a freedom in God. There is a freedom, and you don't have to live with, oh, it's, it's going it's, it's to sneak up, and your addiction's going to come back. Now, I'm in church today where I get encouraged. I'm in church today where people are, are, are wanting God and wanting to go forward in God, okay? Now, if I was at the tavern last night, I may not be able to say I can overcome. Once God sets you free, there may be things that God wants you to do. For me, God told me uh, enough is enough. God told me to take a choice between him and alcohol. I know God told me that when in Germany, in my barracks room, God said, I had a Bible sitting there, I had alcohol sitting there. God told me, make a choice. Which one do you want? And so I picked up the half full German beer and uh, I dropped it in the garbage right there. I made my choice. And what a freedom it has brought. God, God can set people free. God can heal. God can set people free. Okay? And so, throughout the Bible, Jesus healed. We dealt with, the old, we dealt with God as the, our Creator and our Father wants us to be healed. We dealt with uh, God healed people in the Old Testament. God healed water so people could be healed. God, God healed uh, 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 leprosy. Uh, he rose people from the dead in the Old Testament. He did all kinds of things. God is so amazing. He said in the Old Testament, He healeth all our diseases. Okay? I believe in this. When I get sick, and I do, I get sickness comes my way, uh, things happen. I, the first thing I do is pray. I may end up at a doctor. I don't know. Maybe God, maybe I'm praying, God help this doctor fix me. Okay? I, I don't understand all of it all the time. In fact, I understand very little about divine healing. I just know God said it can happen. And so I believe. Okay? I believe in it. What I want to, what I want to do this morning when we receive communion we're going to receive communion and then uh, while we're receiving communion if you have need of, of any healing or you, you want prayer for anything you can raise your hands and we're going to just take time to pray one for another if you don't know the Lord as your Savior you haven't surrendered your heart. There's no 12-step program to do that. It's a one step, and that's the step you take. God, I believe in you. God, I believe Jesus died for me. Whatever you say, you believe in your heart. Okay? But tied to communion, tied to communion, and when we take communion, we, we receive the, the cup, or the, the, in the Bible it calls it wine, but just so you know, wine in the Bible is called, grapes in the cluster are called wine in some places, okay? Um, the boiled grapes, where they boil out the bacteria and make a grape juice, that's called wine. And then grapes that they left to rot um, and ferment, Alcohol, they call that wine also. So when Jesus gave them wine, I don't think he was giving them alcohol. Because he said, this is the New Testament in my blood. Jesus' blood brings life and freedom. I don't think Jesus' blood is fermented and decaying. Okay? That's just me. Okay? And... Uh, that's what I believe. So we, we receive the wine as we're acknowledging the death of Jesus and the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross for us. And we believe if we put our faith in Christ, we will be saved. Okay? That's good. We should believe that the blood of Jesus washes away our sin. What was the first song we sang, Abby? What? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, 
Okay? So where Jesus' blood was shed for us. Okay? We believe that the wine represents his blood which forgives our sin. The Bible says in um, uh, several places in the New Testament, but Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, the Bible says that how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself purge your conscience from dead works. The blood of Christ purges our con Where's your conscience at? I'm, you should know where your Bible is or you know where your laptop is or your phone is. Or, but where's your conscience? It's inside there. God has to get to it. The cleansing blood of Jesus that it says it purges our conscience. Preacher, I've heard Naomi turn that girl around and hey, you listen. Um, <coughs> how beautiful that the things we have done where we failed God, sometimes we sin purposely. Right, we knew we shouldn't, but we sinned anyway. How do you deal with that? God cleaned my conscience. Preacher, did you do this, this, and this? Yeah, I probably did. I'm not going to get into a, uh, who did more sins, but I, d I did a lot of things that were totally against God. Well, aren't you ashamed? No, because God took away the shame. I was, I was not serving God when I did those things. And I came to God and He forgave me. I have a new life. The blood of Jesus Christ has purged my conscience from dead works. And the Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, that's the blood. But what else, what else, when we receive communion... When we receive communion, we know the, the, the grape juice represents the blood of Christ, okay? But what, what about this, this wafer or this little, little cracker? Why, why do we have that? Why did, Jesus, why did Jesus say the bread? He said, because this is my body that was broken for you. This is my body. This is my body. Why? Well, it, it, there's several scriptures, but I want you to I, I want to read to you from uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 24. It says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. And it says, by whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes in his own body Jesus said the bread represents his body that is broken or given for us and the Bible says the Bible says by his stripes we are healed you put your faith in Christ. If you haven't before or if you've been lacking, you can just say, God, I believe in you. God, you are the Savior. You're my Savior. Huh? It's, it's, there's, there's no uh, prayer card, so to speak, that you have to quote in order to, in order to uh, get right with God. It's your heart speaking out. It's your heart crying out. 
Jesus said we cry Abba. The Bible says we cry Abba, Father, my Father. We're crying out. Okay? You put your faith in God. When we receive communion, we're not only remembering the blood, but we're remembering the body. The blood washes away our sins. The body, Jesus' body, took upon it all the suffering, the sickness, the evil that the devil could hand out, that he still hands out to humanity today. But when, we, when the devil hands us uh, his garbage, we can go to God and say, God, you are our healer. I'm going to pray right now for healing. We're going to receive communion. And uh, when you, if you want prayer, um, you just raise your hands. And when we get a moment, I'm going to have them come back and sing that last song again. And just worship God. Let's pray. Father, God, I thank you for your healing power. First of all, for the saving of our soul, dear God. I can go to heaven with a, with a broken arm. You can heal it there, but I can't go to heaven with a sin-sick soul. My sins have to be forgiven. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Lord God, thank you so much for what Jesus did to save our soul. But Father, this morning I thank you for what Jesus did to deliver us, our body, from the torments of, of, of pain, of sickness, of disease, dear God. Lord, you're, you're a healer. I've got aches and pains, dear God. You can heal them. This morning when I was coming, there were shooting pains going up my back. And I'm like, this, this is, just doesn't make sense. God, I believe in you. I believe you for divine healing. And I ask you to heal everyone that comes to you by faith this day. God, we pray for Colin. Sarah stayed home this morning because Colin was sick. God, I pray for my little buddy. I ask you to just touch him. Touch him in a divine, special way and let him know God. Build his faith. Build the faith of that young man and mom and dad also. Touch him. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.